In today's video, we'll be covering this month's cannon fodder, issue 133, Food for Thought. We'll be digging right into some juicy lore from the Halo cookbook, highlighting some of the many cuisines and restaurants within the Halo universe. We'll also be covering some lore behind the Breach Spartan armor that was added with MCC's August update to Halo 2 Anniversary. And then we'll take a moment to check in with our fellow Halo community content creators and their recent projects. I hope you came hungry, because there's plenty of Halo lore to go around. Now let's eat. It's only in good taste to start off this article by thanking the Halo Cookbook's in-universe author, Arturo Bustamante, for his efforts in identifying the galaxy's finest cuisines and eateries. When asked as to why he chose this new line of work and to publish his foodie finds, he had this to say. The name's Arturo Bustamante, and I had one of those life-draining upper middle management jobs that no one writes, much less reads, a book about. My time managing contracts and arrangements with Yaka Frutus let me see just how far humanity has expanded in the universe, and what each settlement and station and outpost does to keep their stomachs and hearts full. But I'm more than happy to leave that behind and keep my feet on soil for the rest of whatever time I have left. I don't miss any of the work, but something in me felt incomplete after my retirement. After much contemplation, I decided that a compilation of all my favorite meals from my time cruising the stars would be a great project to keep myself busy. If you're planet bound like I am now, consider this an opportunity to see a sliver of what you may be missing without the perils of space travel. And trust me, you're not missing too much. Space is, after all, vast and full of danger. Arturo has a lot to say for the locations and foods in this month's article, so I'll do my best to summarize what he had to say on his behalf. One of the first on that list is the Pillar of Autumn Cafe. The Pillar of Autumn Cafe once acted as a reprieve from the sterile and artificial environments one subjected themselves to during intergalactic travel. Before the Master Chief caused the ship's engines to self-destruct, the cafe offered a wide array of food to the crew and its passengers. A hungry patron would find that the menu offered turkey, hamburger, cheeseburger, hot dog, and meatloaf dinner options, with a variety of drinks and, of course, the chef special. However, the secret behind what exactly this special might have been will forever remain a mystery. When you're feeling drained from the demanding nature of the worlds we live in, there's no better remedy than grabbing a hot coffee and flaky pastry from your local Havati Goodwin. The smells, the people, and even the layout of this chain can make anyone feel right at home. The cafe is best known for its galaxy-famous custard pies, chocolate chip scones, and the best blend of coffee from Earth to reach. Loved even by the mother of the Spartan Twos, Catherine Halsey once made this a frequent stop. But after losing most of their brick-and-mortar locations during the Human Covenant War, it's unclear whether or not the franchise will reopen any of their locations anytime soon. The pleasant barista waving goodbye while saying, have a good one, is now but only an echo in our hearts. I think we can all agree that at one point or another, we found ourselves desperately trying to find food and drink at the deadest hours of night. But when heading home, you turn the corner, and there it is, the vending machine. Oh yes, nothing quite hits the spot like a blast lemon-lime soda and a helpful serving of non-perishable mole wings. At least according to Bustamante. Situated in the Longshore District along the coast of Old Mombasa, Franck stands as a reminder of a world before humanity's decades of war with extraterrestrial foes. The brand is famous for their formed fish nuggets and fish tacos, the nuggets in particular being something which Bustamante himself still dreams about to this day. And while it is seldom discussed, there was once a point in time which Eric Birch, motorsports manager of AMG Transport Dynamics, approached Franks in hopes of receiving sponsorship for his pet project, simply referred to as Hog Sticker. Now sadly, this Needler Hog project never got off the ground, as his approval request was denied by his superiors, probably because AMG had bigger fish to fry. World Cuisine was a fast food restaurant with a notable presence on the planet Reach before the Human Covenant War. A hungry patron would have found stalls up in the New Alexandrian high-rise pavilions or even down by the beachfronts, offering a wide variety of cultural food options with the convenience that comes with fast food. The chain is best known for its moa burgers, salmon burgers, sushi rolls, harira, Hainanese chicken, and barbacoa tacos, all of which are offered in a generous combo meal. After the conclusion of the Human Covenant War, world cuisine rose from the ashes once again, branching out to a number of other colonized human worlds. Every now and again, the best remedy for being on the front lines is a good old-fashioned, old-fashioned. Even some of the galaxy's finest need a little bit of liquid courage and good grub, all of which can be found at the Full Moon Bar on the UNSC Infinity. 
From swords of Sanghelios representatives to Spartans, this bar is a moment of reprieve from the unrelenting front lines of the ever-changing galaxy. The notable Spartan Edward Buck and Veronica Dare were both married here in the year 2558, with the wedding being officiated by Roland, the ship's AI. Now while Bustamante declined to share what it was he was doing aboard the Infinity, he still vouches for the bar's selection of drinks, which he happily shares the recipes for in the Halo cookbook. Have Samoa is by far the most popular supplier of the galaxy's Moa meat, which was once common to see on the menu at establishments across the galaxy. But after the invasion of the Covenant and the glassing of Reach, the species was almost entirely wiped out. Luckily though, small populations scattered across human colony worlds were able to keep Moas on the menu and from going extinct. One of the most successful locations in securing the future of the Moa Burger is Wijak Bentley's restaurant and petting zoo on the inner colony planet of Gannick 22. While the company may have seen a slight decline in production due to the conservation efforts, Bustamante wants it to be clear. Moa burgers are truly not all that, let alone that there would be a tragedy without them. Additionally, after the discovery of the Halos, Have Samoa took the opportunity to begin advertising that they had onion rings the size of Halos. And while this may be a clear exaggeration, it's still suggested that you bring a teammate to help you finish the bite. Within the central plaza of Promesa, one would find Enzo's Churrascaria, Mayama's Noodle Bar, Thai Game, and Fish Fish. The food in this plaza represents a conglomeration of cultures and the upbringings of their communities, with each restaurant telling their own story, the chefs bringing their roots, their upbringing, and even their hardships to the food that they serve to their patrons. This, Bustamante notes, is more important than ever in humanity's interstellar age. Nestled right in the heart of the Mombasa cityscape, hidden in plain sight, is Cuckoo's Cafe. Even at its busiest, the keen observer may fail to recognize that the establishment is even open. Bustamante commends this restaurant for its sandwiches and says that it's criminal how they don't have more of a public presence. But of course, the locals are perfectly happy keeping it that way. And last but not least, Jonas's Kebab Stall. Jonas was a man of bravery and conviction. During the evacuation of New Mombasa, Jonas, rather than evacuating, chose to serve his community the best way he knew how. Knowing that he would surely take up too much space in an evacuation vehicle, he instead devoted his final hours to help feed his community in their time of need. Bustamante finally remembers encountering Jonas in his stall and has gone to great lengths to recreate the beef kebabs that he once served there. And with that, our culinary journey comes to a close. But now, unto the breach. It goes without saying that the War with the Covenant was only the first of humanity's laundry list of problems over the recent decades. And all the while, companies and manufacturers have been developing new armor and technologies in hopes of giving humanity an edge in this combat. The Spartan program, more than most, has benefited greatly from this, and the modular design of the Mjolnir platform has allowed for a number of new armor options. Fittingly named the Breach Armor Set, the features present provide Spartans with enhanced sensors, specialized armor, and extensive amounts of additional ammunition capacity. Field tests were conducted by Spartan Team Omega, which proved incredibly effective. And because of this, many of these new features were brought into the Gen 2 and Gen 3 of Mjolnir development. During the Halo World Championship from October 21st to 23rd, Alex Wakeford, Jeff Easterling, Jeremy Potnod, and a community guest will be hosting a live lore discussion. Now, if you're unable to attend this event in person, more details on how we can tune in online will be given as we get closer to the event. Moving along to the community lore corner, we've got another great selection of lore content from our awesome community. First up, I'm happy to say that my summary video from last month's Cannon Fodder issue 132 was featured. Last month's cannon fodder may be by far my favorite in recent history, as the issue notably covered a collection of Halo's background enemies from across the games. All of the characters covered are enemies that we've actually fought plenty of times, so if you haven't already, be sure to go give that a watch. Thunder Buddy provided a great mix of narrative and gameplay, while tapping into the mental state of Master Chief as he first encounters the Flood. This video goes beyond the gameplay and our experience as the player, as he hones in on elements from the novel Halo the Flood. And because of this, Thunder Buddy is able to create visual parallels while he's actually playing the 343 Guilty Spark mission in Halo Combat Evolved. Halo Guy also tapped into the novels by highlighting a moment from Kelly Gay's Halo Point of Light, where the librarian seemingly gives humanity one final warning. Without revealing too much, Halo Guy questions if the message that she gives has any relation to the Endless that we see mentioned in Halo Infinite, and then what it may mean for the future of the Halo universe. Also featured is the first of several videos made by Covenant Canon, highlighting the different ages of the Covenant. 
This first installment will be covering the First Age, when the San Shayum Stoics and Reformists entered a war over the key ship that would eventually become the centerpiece of High Charity. Since this month's Cannon Fodder issue was actually published, Covenant Cannon has already released the third installment of that series, so if you're interested in learning about the history and eventually downfall of the Covenant, you'll definitely want to check out their channel. And lastly, Lore Tours had the chance to play the Fireteam Raven arcade game while away on holiday, and he came back wanting to share the lore behind each of these ODSTs. The video is short and sweet, highlighting the history of each member of the team and detailing their actions of what's going on behind the scenes during the events of Halo Combat Evolved. A link to Lore Tour and everyone else's videos can be found in the description below. And to finish off the article, the Q&A section provided insight ranging from the banished insignias to the favorite food of Master Chief. Of course, if you'd like to learn more, go ahead and head on over to the article. The link can be found in the video's description. That'll do it for today's cannon fodder summary. As always, please feel free to drop a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you want to see more cannon fodder summaries, lore shorts, and more. And please don't forget to leave a comment and suggest what character Halo lore I should cover in a future video. But that's all for now. I'll see you in the next one.